Everybody excited about the word today? Very excited. Come on, there's life in the word. There's healing in the word, deliverance in the word. Everything you and I need is found in the word of God. Amen. Amen. And I know we have a word from God on today. But before we jump in, can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all give a hand to our first time worshipers? Welcome. So Welcome. excited to have you Welcome. all. Welcome. We are so glad you decided to worship with us today. We love God and we love to see you come back and worship with us all over again. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can y'all give one more hand to our own television audience? Come on, come on, Welcome do better than that. In. Wherever you're watching from in the world, it's not by accident that you found us. The Bible says that the steps of good men and women are ordered by the Lord, so he has a word for you. Don't turn away. You're getting ready to be blessed on another level. Amen. Amen, amen. I just have one thing I want to say. Ladies, this is our last week of Soul Care September. Woo! This has been a good month, Pastor Mary. It has been so good. And it kind of flew by, didn't it? Really fast, really fast. But make sure you get your last week's activities and playlists and reading plans and finish strong, okay? We want to take the whole prescription God has for us this month so we can be better. So she's saying don't be like you normally are when you catch a little <laughs> cold and they give you that amoxicillin. They say take, take one in the morning and take one at night for 19 days. And then you get to day six and you're already feeling better. So you're like, I don't need the rest of that. Right. No, but if you, you want to complete, how many want everything that God has for them? Complete job. If complete you want everything healing, that God has for you, you got to finish yeah. the whole prescription. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. And so we're going to finish strong. Everybody say finish strong. Finish strong. All right. So if you have your Bible, your smartphone, your iPad, however you get the word, come on, hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. We're going to make a confession and we're going to jump right in the word. Say this with me. This is my sword. This is my sword. God's holy word. God's holy word. This is my weapon. This is my weapon. Against the enemy of my soul. Against the enemy of my soul. I'm everything. I am everything. That it says I am. That it says I, I am. I can do everything. I can do everything. That it says I can do. That it says I can this do. This is my GPS. This is my GPS. To eternal life. To eternal life. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. If you don't want to be lost, be sure to use your GPS. Amen. Amen. Don't be like most of us. How many ever tried to beat the GPS? <laughs> I mean, I, I have often tried to beat the GPS. But the problem is we spend so much time rerouting because we didn't follow the GPS's plan that we get there so much later than we would have gotten there if we had just followed the plan. Mm. Every time I try to help God out, I just wind up messing things up. So just follow the GPS. Everybody say follow the GPS. Follow that GPS. Well, if you have your Bible, go ahead and locate Ephesians 3. Y'all know the very familiar scripture. Ephesians 3 and 20 and put a, put a mark there and then go ahead and find Genesis the 6th chapter. While you're finding that, we're going to read our main two scriptures series that we've been in. This will be four weeks now, Pastor Mika. Yes, time is flying by. Very familiar scripture. Psalm 23 is our first scripture. Let's read. Let's start the first couple verses, Pastor Mika. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh-huh. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Somebody say, he restores my soul. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Come on, let's read one more scripture, very familiar scripture, 3 John in the second verse. What does it say right there, Pastor Mika? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Okay, so we've been in a teaching series in the, la oh, the last four weeks entitled Soul Food. Everybody say Soul Food. Soul Food. Okay, it's funny, it's funny. Um, when you hear Soul Food, um, different connotations come to your mind. Somebody said fried chicken and yes. macaroni and cheese and cabbage and feet. Oh, somebody said, I'm hungry now. Yeah. But no, um, but, but, we're, but our assignment is not to feed you physically. So when, I, when we say soul food, we're talking about something completely different. Mm -hmm. um, your assignment, the Bible says, God says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, and their assignment is to feed you. Mm -hmm. But what are they to feed you? They are to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Everybody say knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. So um, if you eat well, you'll be nourished. So that means your knowledge base, your intellect will grow, and your understanding will grow. That's your wisdom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, if you fail to eat, you'll have something like that um, they call failure to thrive, and you won't grow, and you'll be malnourished. Mm -hmm. So our assignment, we told you this at the beginning of the month, if you will receive what we're feeding, at the end of this, you're going to have stretch marks on your soul. Let me say that again. I said at the end of this, you're going to have stretch marks on your soul. I know y'all got upset because stretch marks have been given a bad rap. They got all kind of creams and lotions, and you could even do this laser thing to fix your stretch marks. But the, wait, well, let me help you. Stretch marks are not a bad thing. No. Stretch marks are an indication of something. 
It's an indication of that what's on the inside yeah. outgrew what was trying to hold it on the outside. And, and it, it, it indicates that what's on the outside had to stretch if it's going to continue to hold what's on the inside. And so I'm telling you that anything that's been trying to hold you, anything that's been restricting you, um, as your soul grows, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotion, and your imagination grows, if it's unwilling to stretch, you're going to break out of that thing. Mm. I know you got something going on. No, that was exciting. Somebody, it's about to be that, a breakthrough. It's about to be that, a breakout. That's why you're so uncomfortable in some of the situations you're in because they can't hold you like they used to. Some of those friendships just they, they ain't hitting like they used to because they're too small now. Some of those assignments on your job, it's time to break through the ceiling because you've outgrown that. You have a new revelation, a new understanding. So be, it's okay to be a little uncomfortable. Breakthrough is coming. That's why you're uncomfortable. And that's why in the two very familiar scriptures that we just read, um, it gave us two qualifiers if we are to have what God has for us. Mm -hmm. It says, um, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He makes me lie down in the green pastures, leads me beside the still waters and all of that. But then he says, he, he restores, restores my soul. soul. And then it says, he leads me in the path of, of righteousness, righteousness for his name's sake. So if you are to be led in the path of righteousness, it's only on the, on the back end of having a soul that has been restored. How many want God to lead them in the path of righteousness? Without question. So there's a requirement there. You, first, you need your soul restored. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, then here, here it is. Here's God's will. Um, most of us want God's will. Say, prove it, Pastor Russ. Prove it, Pastor Russ. He says, beloved, I wish above all things. That mm -hmm. means I want more than anything else that you should prosper. Somebody say prosper. Prosper. That's materially and financially. Mm -hmm. oh, somebody say, oh, that's one of them prosperity preachers. That's better than a poverty preacher. God is a prosperity God. He says, more than anything else, I want you to prosper, right? Mm -hmm. And what's my favorite word, y'all? And. And. And be in health. So how many want to be prosperous financially and physically healthy? That's real good, but there's a qualifier. It says, even as your soul prospers. So, so he says, I don't want you healthy and wealthy if your soul is not prospering as well. Right. Because there's nothing worse than somebody who's real healthy and got a lot of money and they're sick in their mind. Because if you're nasty broke, you're going to be real nasty when you get rich. If you're stingy broke, you're going to be real, real stingy when you get something. So all of these things, if I want to prosper and I want to have everything God has for me, um, it's going to be on the grounds of a soul that's prospering. Now, I like the fact that in both of those terms, um, they're present tense. Um, he didn't say that he prospered you or that he restored your soul. He says that he, it is an ongoing, continual evolution. So restoration is not just a destination. It's a journey. It's a continual activity, just like prospering. You don't just prosper you one time. He continues to prosper you. So every year that we have Soul Care September, there should be an expectation that when I begin this year, I'll begin better than I was last year, and I'll end this year better than I began this year because I'm applying everything, and he is restoring me even the greater, even the more. Oh, that's good, Pastor Mika. So if I'm to have a restored and prosperous soul, I must first know what my soul is, right? Yes. Okay, so real quick, let's put it on the, um, on the screen. What is a soul? We're going to give you some definitions today. Um, we're going to run through this a little bit. So um, take pictures. You don't write that fast. So um, <laughs> if you need to take a picture, I'll go back and revisit it on the live stream again. Just replay it again. But what is the soul, Pastor Mika? Okay. The soul is the one element of our tripartite reality. It is the real us. Somebody say the real me. The real me. It consists of our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, and our imagination. It consists of what? Read those again. It consists of our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, and our imagination. Okay. How many of y'all know we're made in the image and likeness of God? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Y'all read your Bible. He said, he said uh, it says, God came together. God the Father, he's eternally existing in three births. God the Father, God the Son, God Holy Spirit. He came together and said, let us make man. Okay, now y'all read your Bible, right? He said, let us make man after our image and in our likeness. So if, if I'm made in God's image and his likeness and he's three parts, that means that I must be. Three parts. Oh, be a good class. If he's three parts and I'm made in his image, I must be. Three parts. 
So say this with me. Say, I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I possess a soul. I possess a soul. I live in a body. And I live in a body. Say it again. I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I possess a soul. I possess a soul. I live in a body. And I live in a okay, body. Okay, your spirit is the breath of God. It is, it is the, mm -hmm. literally the breath of life. And, and God breathed into man or mankind. That's not male man. That's man woman. That's mankind. Breathed into man the breath of life. And he became a living soul, a speaking spirit like God. Mm -hmm. So your spirit is the breath of God. Mm -hmm. Your body is the suit you wear. And your soul is mm -hmm. the real you. So when you leave this place, we call it death. Or when you die, your body will go back to the earth. Your spirit, the breath of God, will go back to God. And your soul will either end up in rest or torment. Heaven or hell. No, no, yeah, it's a real heaven and a real hell. And so uh, that's the real you. Say, that's the real me. That's the real me. And we're going to end up in a real place, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's find out what we're going to talk about today. Let's jump in. Ephesians 3 and 20. Y'all know this one. We're going to read it out of the Amplified because this is my favorite version of this scripture. Come on, let's, let's read okay. it. Okay. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and uh -huh. do super abundantly more. To do what? What more? Super abundantly more. I love this. Somebody say super abundantly more. Super abundantly more. I know more. King James says exceeding abundantly above, but I love Amplified says super abundantly more. More what now, Pastor Mika? Than all that we dare ask or think. Watch this. Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. Wait, what if God did infinitely more and greater than, bigger than your greatest prayers, hopes, and mm. dreams? What if you woke up tomorrow and it was done? Hallelujah. Keep going. Watch this. Okay, okay. Don't, don't shout yet. Don't shout yet. According what to. What is it according to? According to his power that is at work within us. Okay. It says it's according to his power that's at work in us. Right. So how many of y'all know God lives in you right now? If you are born again, if you are born again, watch this. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that means um, whatever God is going to do for you is already in you. So now you got to get it to come out of you. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, read, let's read one more. Let's read more. Genesis 6, this is six um, verse 5. Watch this. The Lord saw the wickedness, depravity of man was great on the earth, uh -huh. and that every imagination or intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. Watch this. The Lord regretted that he had made mankind on the earth, and he was deeply grieved in his heart. Say this with me if you're not too mean. Say, if I can imagine it. If I can imagine it. Say it again. Say, if I can imagine it. If I can imagine it. Okay, the late Dr. Miles Monroe said this. He said, when the purpose for a thing is not realized, abuse is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. He said, when the purpose for a thing is not realized, mm -hmm. abuse is inevitable. Um, and this is, it, this is the case in every area of our lives. When you don't realize or have not um, discerned or understood the purpose for a thing, um, then you mess that thing up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The only reason we get abused or mishandled is because the people handling us didn't know what they had. Mm -hmm. Come on. Um, and, and, and the interesting thing is we're going to talk about an element, uh, element of our soul that is so important that when used correctly will produce everything God has for us. But when, when used out of purpose, we'll mess our lives up. It's the imagination. Somebody say imagination. Imagination. I know you want to say something right there. It's, Go ahead. And it's interesting because so many people have um, what they say, the cliche, imaginations that run wild because we haven't learned its purpose and how to govern our imagination. Come on, talk about that's it. That's why um, we can have, there's, there's two ends of the spectrum. You can have an, Im an imagination that's very grand, and people will try to stifle that imagination. They'll mm -hmm. try to shrink back your visions to something that they can handle. So you got your head in the clouds. Right. So we have that end of the spectrum where people, it's so grand people can't handle it. That's the side I think I'd like to err on more. Um, the other side, though, is when it's not governed at all and everything the enemy brings up across the canvas of our imagination, we pursue. Um, there, there's a cliche or a thing they say when someone good looking walks by, it's like, hmm, I wonder what I could do with that. That's the enemy playing on the canvas of your imagination negatively. And because you don't recognize it's something that you can govern, that you can harness, that you can control, it literally runs wild. And before you, before you know it, you're following your imagination. And the old folk used to say you can't stop a bird from flying over your head. But, but you, you don't, don't have, have to allow them to make, make a, a nest, nest in your hair. And so we're going to talk about imagination. Somebody say imagination. Imagination. And so we're going to give you a couple of definitions really quickly, and then we're going to bless you. This, this is going to bless your life. Um, so... 
Might as well take a picture because these are a little bit yeah. long. We tried to shrink them the best we tried we could, to shrink them to the best I of promise. our ability. <laughs> um, what is an imagination, Pastor Mika? Okay. Watch this. Imagination is the ability of the soul to create and envision new ideas, images, and concepts of external objects without engaging them physically. Well, let's read that one more time. Okay. Imagination is the ability of the soul to create and envision new ideas, Im images, and concepts of external objects without engaging them physically. Somebody say, without engaging them physically. Okay, okay. Um, you, you, you can use your imagination right now. We're going to use it really quickly. Everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. Um, take me to your house. You're at your house. You're at your front door. Can you see your front door? Okay, go in your front door. Look to the right. Do you see what's there? Look to the left. Do you see what's there? Okay, walk, keep walking. Go in the kitchen. Open the refrigerator. Can you see what's in there? Can you see what's not in there? <laughs> All right, open your eyes, open your eyes. Okay, so I just showed you how you have the ability to engage with something um, without touching it physically. Because you just went there, right? But you didn't leave your seat. So that's imagination. Everybody say imagination. That's imagination. But now we have two forms of imagination, and the first one is um, Synthetic imagination. Everybody say synthetic imagination. Synthetic imagination. So what is synthetic imagination, Pastor Mika? The synthetic imagination is the ability to arrange familiar concepts, ideas, or plans into new combinations. Okay, synthetic imagination doesn't create anything. Um, it just simply um, use, it merely uses um, material of experience, education, and observation. Um, so um, it's when you put together the stuff that you already know, um, to make decisions and have ideas. That's synthetic imagination. Everybody say synthetic imagination. Synthetic imagination. We, we're going somewhere. Okay, so, so now tell me what you want to I want to just kind of expound on synthetic okay, imagination. Okay, come on, jump on. So what that is where most people live, and that's why most people are afraid of their imaginations. Because what synthetic imagination does is it takes information from experiences and then uses that to create new moments. Not that anything of it is new, it just packages them together so that you Ooh. experience them again. So an illustration I used this morning is if you've had a group friendship breakup or, you know, we were all cool at one point, but now it just fell into some mess. When you walk into the room with a completely different set of people, your mind begins to reconstruct your past experience. So you walk into a room and you see people talking and immediately you think you're the topic of conversation. And you know, that's why you hear so many women say, well, well you know, I don't do women, you know, because they so messy. Yes, right. No, the ones but, you was messing with no, was no. messy. The, ones the rest you of us are fine. The, yeah, the ones you <laughs> mess with was messy. The and, rest of us are, the yeah. whole ones are good company, yeah. I'm telling you. And so you, you inappropriately use your synthetic imagination to punish your next because of your ex. Oh, y'all got quiet, y'all got quiet. Y'all got quiet because when, when Jimmy brought me flowers, it's because he had cheated. Well, my name is Russ, my name is not Jimmy. I brought you flowers because you're pretty and they pretty and I thought you was going to be happy. So everybody say, y'all got it? Synthetic imagination, y'all got it? This is a, a dangerous place for trauma because trauma likes to lodge itself in this place so that it can continue to hurt you in your present by bringing up memories from your past. Hmm. So okay. that's synthetic. Let's go. The next kind of imagination is creative imagination. Everybody say creative imagination. Creative imagination. All right. This is where God wants you to live. Come on, talk about it. Now, the creative imagination is the ability of our souls to receive new ideas, hunches, and inspiration. Read that one more time, Pastor Mika. Okay. The creative imagination is the ability of our souls to receive new ideas, hunches, and inspiration. It is literally when God paints a picture on the canvas of your mind. No, it is, it, is, it is how God talks to us and, and how God gets his will done in the earth. Um, he gives someone an idea, someone a hunch, someone a, a nudge, if you will. Uh, I love how Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill wrote this. He says, it's when the finite man, mind of man has direct communication to the infinite intelligence, which is God. Let me read that one more time. He says, it's when the finite man, mind of man has direct communication with, in, with the infinite intelligence, and that's God. Everybody say creative imagination. Creative imagination. So let's jump in and say, if I can imagine it. If I can imagine it. Here we are, Genesis 1. Start at verse 1, Pastor Mika, please. 
In the beginning, God created. Wait, in the beginning, come on. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, what? In the beginning, God. In the beginning, what, class? In the beginning, God. Okay, no. So, in the beginning, it wasn't Big Bang. If it was, God banged it together. <laughs> Let me tell you why. If you look at just creation, creation is obviously intelligently designed. It didn't just, the earth don't just accidentally spin on its axis around the sun and all the other planets and gravity and for some reason we can breathe this air and for some reason um, somebody created this seat that you can sit in and for some reason Pastor Megan and I are here explaining it all. In the beginning, God. So in, in case you were confused, I'm going to help you. In the beginning, God. Okay, keep going. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness and darkness was over the surface of the deep. Watch this. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Mm. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Watch this. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was even evening, and there was morning one day. Number one, put this in your notes. If I can imagine it, I can create the world I want. Let me say that again. If I can imagine it, I can create the world I want. What are you saying? God gave us an imagination because he ha obviously has an imagination. Okay, the mind of God is more creative than anyone else's. Mm -hmm. He made birds and bees and dogs and cats and flowers. Come on, so many different things. And we can't even make up our, make up our mind about what we want to eat. <laughs> Y'all got quiet. He wants us to be like him, right? Mm -hmm. He wants, okay, what does he do? Um, he thinks about what he wants, then says what he wants, then sees what he wants. Oh, let me say that again. He thinks about what he wants, declares what he wants, then expects to see what he declared. Most of us operate in reverse. Very much so. We say what we don't want, then we get mad at what we see as a result because we never thought about what we said. Oh, let me say that again. I think a few of us missed it. God thinks about what he wants, declares what he wants, then sees what he wants. So y'all know, so um, in the beginning it was dark and God went outside and God was looking outside. He said, man, it's too dark out here. <laughs> he said, man, I wish it wasn't so dark. Mm -mm. Man, I can't see nothing. Nope. No, God didn't say that. It, sa it says, God says, let there be light. I love the translation. It says, God said, light be, and light was. And, and ever is. since God said, light be, light has continued to expand at the speed of light and continues to expand today. But it was only because he thought about it. Then did he, see, don't say what you see. Say what you want to see. Scripture says, you shall decree a thing, and, and it, it shall, shall be established, established, and the light of God's favor will shine upon it. Talk about it, Pastor Mika. So I hear in my spirit, somebody needs to go back and start dreaming again. Come on. You need to turn the imagination back on. Um, you've decided based on disappointments and life experiences that imaginations was a thing for children and you needed to be in the real world. And so you've been living finitely with all you can see and handle. But you're missing the download that God wants to get through you into the earth because you will not allow yourself the creative space to dream. So I'm telling you right now, begin to dream again. Oh, Pastor Mike, you want me to tell them how to do it? Yes. Okay, let me give you some, some, some quickly. This is how you can begin to expand your imagination and dream again. This is what you do. Get, when you get ready to go to bed, before you go to bed, um, begin to look at, envision um, the things that you're believing God for that are way beyond what you're thinking of right now. No, no, begin to look at them. No, 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 I'm telling you. Look at them. Google them. Get you a whole list of them. Look at them. Read about them. And then turn you some nice music on. How many, how many of y'all know your subconscious mind never sleeps? Your physical body sleeps, but your subconscious mind never does. And so, um, so get, them in, get them on your mind, play some nice soft music, and go to sleep. You will begin to dream about them. You will begin to see yourself with it. You will begin to see yourself walking in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's because if I can imagine it, I can create the world I want. Okay, um, the only reason you're sitting in that chair because that was somebody's vision. And that vision came to fruition because not only did they see it, they said it, and then they put, went to working on it. Is that okay? Y'all okay? So good. God gave you that imagination so you could be creative like him. 
Come on, let's keep going. Hebrews 11 and 1. Let's read out of the Amplified Bible. Okay, just read the first three words, Pastor Nita. Now faith is. Somebody say, now faith is. Now faith is. Faith is always in the present because if, if it said now faith was, that would be in the past, right? Right. If it said now faith will be, that would be in the future. It says now faith is. So if it's not now, it's not faith. Right. So it's always in the present, infinitum, forever. If it's tomorrow, it's going to be now faith is. <laughs> so what is faith, Pastor Mika? The assurance, title deed, confirmation uh -huh. of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. Well, it just says that it is the substance of of the things that you are hoping for. Mm -hmm. Anybody believe in God for something? Yes. I said, anybody, everybody should wave your hand. Yes. Because wait a minute, you don't need faith if you're not believing God for anything because faith is the substance of things. Yes. Let me say that again, I think you missed it. If you're not believing God for anything, you don't need faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. But since every one of us is believing God for something, yes. we must walk by faith. Yes. Come on, keep pressing me. And the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, what? faith comprehends. Come on. Faith comprehends as fact. This is his favorite passage. That's why he keeps trying to read it with me. Yes. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Okay, that's because number two, if I can imagine it, my faith can produce it. Oh, let me say it again. If I can imagine it, my faith can produce it. Okay, God gave us imaginations so we could practice our faith. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me say that again. God mm -hmm. gave you an imagination so you could practice your faith. Um, scripture says, now faith is. Uh -huh. It's the substance of the thing you're hoping for. You need imagination to see yourself having or being with the thing you're hoping for. Amen. No, no, oh, no, this is what I want you to know. See, no, get with me, no. Uh, go and close your eyes for a second again. Now imagine yourself with that thing. No, 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 you did that one, that one. <laughs> Can you see yourself with it? Can you see yourself driving it? Yeah. Can you see yourself flying in it? Yeah. Can you see yourself living with it? Yeah. Now open your eyes. You, you don't need to have it in your hand. You have faith. Yeah. Okay, okay. So act accordingly. No. Talk about it, Pastor Mika. So act accordingly. If what do you, you mean? Are, if you are living in faith and believing God for a new car, then I need to get in here and clean out my garage. I need to start putting aside that gas money. I need to look at who I want to be washing it. I need to prepare myself. If I'm looking for my family to be restored, if I'm looking for my children to come home, let me just start calling them at 10 o'clock so that I'll make sure that they can get in the routine of being up in time to be at 11 o'clock service. You know, when, if, I'm, if I'm believing them, if I'm believing my marriage to be restored, let me take a look at what couples ministry has to offer at this church. Um, let me see where I can sow into another relationship because I'm believing God for mine to be restored. And this is how, this is, this is the one that really gets you. If you're single and you're looking for a spouse, I'm going to speak to the women right now. The Bible says, he who findeth oh, yeah, a you, you know, wife. Me. Somebody say wife. Wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor with the Lord. So I can't, I have to be a wife in order to be found. Okay, 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 right? okay. Pass me, can, so, let me, let me jump in. Let me jump in. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. It don't say he who find a woman find a good thing. Right. It say he who find a... Wife. So that means when he find you, you got to be wife material. Right. Wait, can, can, I, can I help you? Married men, wave your hand. It's the places you don't want to find your wife. Right. Men, you should have said better than that. So that means if they find you there, you may not be... A wife. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, and using my imagination skills to produce what I want. In my mind, what does a good wife look like? How does she talk? How does she move? What does she wear? Where does she hang out? Well, who are her friends? What does she study? Because I need my, my mind to begin to see me the way that God sees me in my mind so that I can begin to use my faith to produce what I'm believing God Come for. on, Pastor Mika. Both sides of the coin. If I'm being a wife, God, what does my husband look like? Where, where does he shop? I need to start seeing those kind of things. What does his Bible look like? Can he pray, Lord? Can he speak in tongues? What does his career look like? I need to get these things on the canvas of my imagination. <laughs> Why is why you laughing? No, I'm laughing because I'm laughing because you know, some people be like pastor, pastor, pastor. Um, you know, pastor, uh, I'm, I'm dating this guy. I say, well, um, does he love the Lord? He go to church. Well, I, wait, why, he go to church. I go in the garage in my car. It's a difference. I said, does he love the Lord? Oh, matter of fact, bring him to see me. Oh, he said he don't really like to go to church like that. Mm. 
Red flag. That's a red banner. That's a banner. That's a whole banner. Yeah. Come on. That's me. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Start to engage your imagination with the, with the things that God has promised you so you can begin to use your faith to pull it into the reality. So stop saying, I can't, never, I can't see myself doing this. I can't see myself having that. I can't see myself ever being able to own that. That's like putting prison bars on your imagination when you say that. You're limiting your own imagination. I could never drive a car like that. Clink. And, and watch this. You don't the have to worry. Closed. You don't have to worry. You never will. Right. And it's not because of anyone other than yourself. Not because God don't want you to have it. Not because God can't provide it. But because you have closed your imagination and declared with your mouth that I could never. And you have just what you say. Is that all right? Come on, let's keep going because we got to get to find you fit. Habakkuk 2 and 2. Let's read this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision and inscribe it clearly on tablets. Somebody say clearly on tablets. Clearly on tablets so that one who reads, it may run. Number three, put this in your notes. If I can imagine it, I can get excited about it now. Let me say that again. If I can imagine it, I can get excited about it now. Somebody say now. Now. Okay, God gave us imaginations so our visions would birth enthusiasm. Let me say that again. God gave us imaginations so our visions would birth enthusiasm. What he said, um, God has given each one of us a canvas. Everybody say canvas. A canvas. Um, and when he gives us um, visions, he begins to draw on the canvas of our imaginations. Mm. He, uh, he, he, he draws pictures on the canvas of our imaginations so we get excited about running our race. Mm -hmm. Not to breed fear. And I think a lot of us are afraid because some of the things God has written are so big that it's like, oh, God, how could this ever be? But I want you to know that you don't have to be afraid because our job is just obedience. His job is performance. Watch this, wait. So, so watch this. I only mess up when I try to perform. That's it. No, no, no. His job is performance. Our job is faith and obedience. Okay, okay, okay. Um, he gives us a canvas on our imagination. Um, he wants us to get excited about the picture that he showed us. Mm -hmm. You can go there without ever going there. Right? Definitely. You want to talk about it? You can talk about it. Okay. Okay. Um, you can literally visit your future without a time machine. Anybody who li like me, I like science movies. I like Marvel a movies. Trekkie, and I like bit. Star Trek and all that kind of stuff. And I, I really like the ones where they time travel. Some of y'all old, y'all remember Back to the Future. How many of y'all remember that DeLorean? I'm going to give me some younger people. I'm going to give me some younger people. Hey, don't hate. I remember it too. Okay. So anyway, so you can literally get in a machine and travel from here to 2035, and then you could come back, and it was like you never left. You know they stole that from God. Y'all missed it. No, 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 no. I literally get excited because I visit my future often. Ah, I think y'all, I think y'all missed it right there. No, no. Tell them about I, it. I, I, I visit the future on the canvas of my imagination so I can get excited to continue to run because I know what's coming. Because I know something about God. He won't show it to me and don't let me have it. Right. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk upright. Okay. Maybe y'all not as extreme as me. I do stuff. So I, I do stuff. So, um, so they used to have, before the pandemic, but now they came, they came back, they used to have something called air shows. Because I'm believing God for a really nice jet one day soon. Right. I got to be able to get back here and preach. Say Amen. Don't get mad. You believe in God for a car. Okay. A bus, a van. Okay, that's you. I in God for a jet. I already got a car. A couple cars. Okay, anyway. And so, um, so I used to go to the air show, and I still do. I'm going back. I'm going back. So, um, um, in fact, I joined the aviation society with no plane. Anyway, so, <laughs> so I went, and they used to have all the planes lined up. You know, all the planes. And you could go in them, and you could check them out, and you could sit down, and you could, you know, see what you want, see what you like. And so, so, um, so one day, I went to the show, and I... And I, I do my research first because I know what I want. So I went in this plane, not the kind that I like, but it wasn't quite what I like. And I, and, and I was sitting in the seat and I was, you know, adjusting the seat and moving it around and doing some things. And they always have a, 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 a very smart and pretty um, lady to come talk to you about it. Hello, sir. How you doing? And, um, you know, this is the, and I finished the sentence. I said, well, this is the so-and-so, so-and-so. But, you know, I, the, I, it don't have the winglets on it. And it, um, it's got the, the leather hides. I want crocodiles and da 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 And so she was like, um, 
oh, you have, you have, the, you have this model? I said, not that model. I said, no, I don't, I don't have this model. And I got up and left. My son said, y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it, see, because I'll laugh because y'all think I don't have it. I do have it. Y'all just haven't seen it yet. I've already flown in it. I've already flown in it and find out how much time it takes for me to get back to be on time to preach. I already know how many nautical miles it will go. So I don't play it too close. Because I ain't flying on faith. I'm flying on few. <laughs> Say amen to that. Amen. But, it, oh man. But God gives you those moments and those pictures so that you can be excited about the race that you're running. Come he, on. He, not only did he do that because it will keep you motivated, but he recognized that the journey won't always be easy. There's going to be something that you're going to need to be able to hold on to so that you can endure the rougher times. Even Jesus himself had the vision of salvation and us being restored to him. It says in the Bible, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the pain and the shame of the cross. So this is not a new concept. This is very much a reality. But too many of us are forfeiting that motivation by trying to shrink down what God has shown us can happen to what we feel we can do with our natural means. How many of y'all have ever been to Disney World? Anybody ever been to Disney World? One of my, come on, wave your hand if you've been to Disney World. Okay, so most 90% of us have been to Disney World. They have a park at Disney World called Epcot. Gotta love Epcot. Know, I love Epcot. It's got, um, they have the food and wine festival and all that. Yeah. Singles and food and all that kind of stuff. I like singles. I like food. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So, um, Walt Disney, Walt Disney died before Epcot was completed. And so they were interviewing Walt Disney's wife and they were saying, aren't you sad that Walt never got to see Epcot? She said, what do you mean? She said, if Walt had yes. not been to Epcot, there would be no Epcot. Oh, see, I think y'all missed it. I think y'all missed it. I think y'all missed it. Um, Walt, Walt had already walked down the street to the big globe. <laughs> he had already gone to, to uh, Thailand and Germany and, and Nairobi and all the different villages. He had already been there thousands of times before we had been there once. Because he visited the future on the canvas of his imagination and it got him excited about running his race and even though he didn't get there with us he had already been there before us so if you can imagine it I can get excited about it now we got two more we we'll get you out of here Mark 9 23 watch this Jesus said to him if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes he said if you can believe most stuff you can do all things he said, you can do a few things if you believe, right? All things. Does all mean believe. absolutely every single one of them? Absolutely everything. So number four, if I can imagine it, I can bypass current budgetary restrictions. Oh, y all, y all, I think y'all missed it. People get nervous when you start talking about money, Pastor Russ. If I can imagine it, I can bypass current budgetary restrictions. What are you saying? I can build without worrying about building costs. Because I already got the building built in my mind. Oh, see, I think y'all miss, missed it. See, y'all won't even think about it because you're thinking about how much it costs. But what, okay, okay, if I told you I'm going to give you a car, do you have to worry about how much it costs? Why? Because I'm going to give it to you. So if God said I've already given you the land, I think, I think, you, I think, you, I think, you, I think you missed it. I, I, th I think... Wait, okay, the children of Israel. I'm going back to the Bible. I'm going to be real spiritual now. Mm, the children of Israel. <laughs> the walls were up. Uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and God said, shout, for I have given you the city. Did he say buy the city? No. Did he say pay for the city? No. Did he even say fight for the city? No. He just said shout because I have given, given it to you. Given you the city. So they didn't even have to, so all they had to do was see themselves in the city that he gave them. They bypassed budgetary restrictions because they didn't have to build a city. The city was already built. He said, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build, wells you didn't dig. Vineyards you didn't plant. So if I can imagine it, I done went past permitting, 
budgeting, bank, finance, approval process. I don't have to be approved. They gave it to me. Talk about it, Pastor. No, you just have to be obedient. Hmm. That's the key. You just have to be obedient. Be obedient and willing, you'll eat the good of the land. Let me Come tell on. you why so many um, visions that God has um, put into the earth fall to the ground. Because we get stuck on the performance part. My assignment is not performance. It is literally obedience. When after he had preached to those 5,000 and he told them that they needed to feed them, the disciples immediately went to budget. Well, if we had 100 penny worth, we wouldn't be able to feed all these people, Jesus. He said, feed them. That was it. Mm -hmm. Then he provided something for them to share, and they bring it to him. This is all we got, just five loaves and some fish. This, this is it, Lord. He was giving them an opportunity to activate their faith. Mm. So he showed them what to do. He took what they gave him. He held it up before the Lord, and he blessed it. What does it mean to bless it? Bless it means to speak well of it. So he wait, didn't say... Wait. Give it, give it to him. Tell him he didn't take with. the fish and say, Lord, these little fish that you gave us and these little bit of biscuits, can you do something with it, Lord? If you no, he use... blessed it. He thanked the Lord for the provision that he made for this need at this time. He thanked them for being faithful and providing for the need. And then he told them to sit them down and feed them. Now, the baskets of leftover were not for the people that were there. Come on, talk about it. Because a lot of people get excited because you know there were 12 baskets of food left over and after not, he not fed Not no little people. bitty basket, not no lunch basket. Baskets. Baskets that you can hide a man in. Baskets. Those baskets were not for the people that they fed. Those baskets were to remind the disciples that if you will just obey me when I give you the instruction, I will give you more than you need to meet the need. And watch this. And the boy who shared his lunch... Took home, took home 12 baskets. Can you imagine what his mama said when he had people walking with baskets of food back to her house? Where did you get all this food? I sold the lunch that you gave me into the plan of God mm. through his men and women. And the harvest that I immediately received is following me home right now. Mm. All right, last one, last one. We out of here because we got to go to find your fit. Psalm 27. Let's read verse 13. Go ahead. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Watch this. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Watch this. The moment God realizes that you're willing to hold on and wait forever, you won't have to. Nope. Come on, come on, come on. But as long as you stay anxious and worried that it's not going to happen, you'll continue to wait. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk 2 and 3, come on. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Now watch this. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Okay, last one and you got the whole message. If I can imagine it, I don't have to get discouraged. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. If I can imagine it, I don't have to get discouraged. God give, gave us an imagination so we wouldn't give up before we get there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, because, no, because, come on, let's be honest. Sometimes life be life in y'all. Yeah. Sometimes we be going through some stuff, y'all. Yeah. No, sometimes it don't look like what I saw in here. What I see out here don't look anything what I saw in here. And so God gave us a picture of it so we could see what his plan. He says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future and an expected outcome. Mm -hmm. And so the picture is the expected outcome. Yeah. David said, I would have fainted. I would have given up, except for I believe that I would see the goodness of God, the picture that he showed me in the land of the living. Stop trying to wait for the sweet by and by. What he showed you is for now. Mm. I said what he showed you is for now, and he's about to do it in your life. Okay. Amen. Say this with me. Say, I can't quit. I can't quit. Because I'm not living in what I saw. Oh, no, that was, that was, that was too weak. That was too weak. How many of y'all keep having that recurring dream, that recurring? You saw yourself with it. You saw yourself in it. You saw you, so, but since, you, since I'm not there yet, then I know it's not over yet. Because he's not going to dangle a carrot and be like, you got to be quicker than that. That's not how God works. God said, if I obey and serve him, I'm going to eat the good of the land. No, he says, I'm going to spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. And I got some more years to live. 
with long life, he's going to satisfy me. And so if you can imagine it, stop getting discouraged. Go visit your future. As a matter of fact, I'm done when I tell you this. Close your eyes. Visit your future. What does it smell like? What does it look like? What are y'all doing? Married folk, where are you vacationing? Single folk, what are you eating right now? Oh, y'all see it? Can you see it? Are you there? Are you enjoying it? No, no, come back. Open your eyes, come back. No, see, I knew y'all didn't get it. You would have shouted because that's yours. No, it is yours. For the joy that was set before him, God endured the shame of the cross. Jesus endured. Jesus went through because he knew what he was going to. If you can imagine it, you don't have to get discouraged. And I'm done when I give you this formula. Y'all want the formula? Okay, here's the imagination formula. Y'all ready? Imagination is the beginning of creation. Here it is. You imagine what you desire. Speak what you will. Oh, excuse me. So wait, wait. You, you imagine what you desire. You will what you imagine. You speak what you will. And you create what you saw. Here it is one more time. You imagine what you desire. You just saw it on the, on the canvas of your imagination, right? Now, set your will in advance that you will not quit until you have what you saw. Right? Then, declare what you saw. And finally, allow your faith and your obedience to create what you saw. Y'all with me on that? Somebody say, if I can imagine it. And I imagine I got to quit because I'm out of time. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a better praise than that. Okay, God imagined that you would be here today and he wanted to make a way to make sure that you would be with him forever. So he imagined it. Then he said, without the, the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So he said, build me a body and I'll go. And he provided himself a lamb. He made himself a lamb. He died for you and I so he could have what he imagined. And he imagined you being with him forever. So let's receive that right where you are. Just bow your head. Say this with me. Say, dear Lord, today I repent of sin and I ask you to come into my life and make me brand new. I believe you died for me. I believe you got up for me. And today I make you my Lord, my Savior, and my King. In Jesus' name, amen. Look up here. If you just said that and you meant it, you saved right now. There's three things you need to do. Number one, stay in prayer. That means talk to God every day. Number two, stay in fellowship. That means join a good church where they'll love on you and teach you about the word. We are not the only good church, but we are a good church. If you don't have a church home, you might as well join today. And number three, and most importantly, stay in the word. Everything you need is found in the word of God. Amen. Come on, lift both hands where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, we as a corporate body of believers agree as touching for every circumstance, every situation. We say like Jesus said, it is finished. The curse is broken. And whom the Lord has blessed, no man can curse. So by faith, we receive all the goodness you made available to us. And we receive it all now in Jesus' name. You believe it, shout amen. Shout amen again. Listen, maybe there's some people here today and you want to join the church. If you want to join the church today, just wave your hand where you are. Are there any? If you want to become a member or partner of this church, wave your hand. Where are you? Are there any? Okay, amen. Oh, if you're watching online, somebody, where you at? Where are you? Come on, meet me down here. Come on, who else? Come on, come on, come on. Who else? Somebody, come on. Meet me right here. You want to join the church today? Come on, meet me right here. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Who else? Y'all, y'all clap better than that. Who else? Who else? Meet me right here. Meet me right here. You too, come on. Get some love. Welcome, welcome. Come on, meet me right here. Come on. Come on. Greet them, greet them. What's up, my brother? Already? Welcome, welcome, little man. Come on, man. Come on. I ain't see you up there. Come on, get some love. God bless you, honey. Come on, come on. Come on, get some love. Let me, come, come right here. Come on, let me, don't, don't leave, don't leave. Come back, come back, come back. Come back, we got something for you. Come stay here. Tell everybody your name. Let's get your name. Um, we just required us to take a new partners class so you know we believe, you know we teach. Are you willing to do that? Hey, Amen. Y'all give him a big hand. If you can follow this. Uh, he already gone. He got you. Come this way. Uh, oh, she's going to take the information right here. So if you follow this young lady right here, you're going to get all your information. Get you set up. Follow this lady right here. Y'all give him a better hand than that. Y'all do better than that. All right. Listen. 
When I say everybody, you say that's me. Everybody. We get ready to go find your fit. Let's go check it out. Y'all ready? I got a question for you. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? God bless you. Consider yourself dismissed. Meet me next door. We're going to get some hugs. We're going to love on each other.